Ahoy, and welcome to EDA Trek's Upping the Average, where we take a commander's average deck list as compiled by the data on EDA Trek and make some quick swaps to it to help take it from being a good start and make it a great one. This week, as you can see, it's a pirate's life for me. The commander we're discussing today is Admiral Beckett Brass, a 4-mana 3-3 Grixis pirate who boosts up her fellow crewmates and can steal the cargo right out of enemy ships. Whenever she oversees three or more pirates successfully raiding a single player, she can take something from that player on the end step. Brass has received a huge influx of new cards from Commander Legends that now populate her EDH rec page. In fact, she now even has a little competition in the Pirate Tribal Department, what with all those new Is It Pirate Legends. We're going to stick with the OG today, though. No mutiny here for our favorite buckler of swashes. All right, let's get Brass's average list from EDH Rec and import it into the Architect deck building website. Remember, the swaps we make must either be cost neutral or help lower the price of the overall list. Drink up, me hearties! Before Commander Legends, there were 66 total pirates in the game, not including changelings. And while that might sound like a lot, most of them were landlubbers. Brass had to reach pretty far to find reliable deckhands. Now, though, there are 113 pirates in the game, making this deck not just more viable, but packing some legit firepower. A lot of Commander Legends cards have already shown up in her list, such as the infamous Hole Breacher. Note that Dockside Extortionist doesn't show up in her list, most likely owing to its high price, and per our budget restriction on this series, we won't be adding it. But just know that it's a very solid card that is likely to appear in a lot of brass decks as well. Let's make some improvements in the following three ways. First up, we're going to make some cards walk the plank. Next, we'll recruit ourselves a rowdy crew. And of course, we must make sure that we obey the pirate's code. Let's begin with the plank. I need to have a full, out in the open, no seriously though, make sure that you're listening to this part disclaimer at the very top of this particular installment. A lot, and I mean a lot of the cards that show up in Brass's average list are there specifically because of their awesome pirate flavor. Her deck is basically so full of cool themed cards that it's like you're at Pirates of the Caribbean. So I need to make sure that you are fully prepared for the fact that I will be cutting a lot of those cards. If you like Admiral Beckett Brass for the awesome pirate flavor, then frankly, stick with the original average list. Ignore me like I'm a warning on a treasure map. This particular episode might not be up your alley. The goal of this series isn't about optimizing every commander to its 100% potential or whatever, but it is about improving our strategy and our gameplay and really our card choices. And that means that flavor kind of always has to take a back seat and it's never the top priority for any of these videos. So while flavor is awesome, it won't be our focus here. So. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's shiver some timbers. First up is the namesake for this section, Walk the Plank. It's a flavorful card, but one that nonetheless has better alternatives. I'm swapping it for Reality Shift, which is easily one of the best creature removal spells out there. There are some counter spells next, which have a lot to do with pirates, but again, better options exist. See why I spent so long explaining the whole flavor disclaimer thing? Anyway, Admiral's Orders can sometimes be a counterspell, but counterspell itself, while obviously less flavorful, is the type of reliable thing that we need to count on if we're threatening to steal things from our enemies, because they will not take kindly to that. Lookout's Dispersal I'm exchanging simply for Negate. I like the Dispersal, but it might whiff sometimes, and to be honest, negate getting non-creature spells is awesome because those are the spells that we're more afraid of. Creature cards we can handle a lot more easily. That's also why I'm cutting Hornswoggle, which actually does kind of break my heart because I, I, Captain, is that a fun name to say? Creatures are less problematic for us, though. I'm more worried about enchantments, which this color combo doesn't have a ton of answers for, so Chaos Warp will help us out there. Up next, Fiery Cannonade. It's really awesome that this can be one-sided, but it doesn't always solve the problems that we need to solve. Plus, looking through this deck, I realize that there's an appalling lack of board wipes. It doesn't matter which wipes you want to add, but there need to be more in this deck, in case the seas ever get too rough. Blasphemous Act is really cheap nowadays, so I'll throw that in, and for kicks, I'm also going to include Necromantic Selection, because it kind of fits in with the stealing stuff theme in a way that I personally enjoy. Pick whichever board wipes you like best, though. Just make sure that you've got more than the zero that appear in this current average list. Alright, we've swabbed the deck, but now we need to look at the cabins below. Let's talk about the crew. 
A lot of awesome pirate commanders are available now, which means that they'll probably all end up carving out their own particular unique strategical niche to set themselves apart from their compatriots, even though they are all drawing from the same pool of cards. Across different pirate decks, and bows and sterns, you'll probably end up seeing a lot of the same faces. But if Beckett Brass is going to stake a claim to any particular identity that is more unique to her than to the other captains out there, I really think that her abilities lend themselves best to evasion. The other pirate commanders are able to focus on being an anthem, or on ripping stuff right out of enemy hands, or on creating treasure, and while Brass does love all of those things too, her own ability can really only thrive if she's actually able to hit people with enough pirates. So evasion is key. Flying, menace, unblockability, anything to help these scallywags sneak aboard an enemy ship. To that end, I'm throwing in Changeling Outcast and Departed Deckhand, two pirates that people will have a very tough time blocking, and will happily help steal things all day. Whoever said dead men tell no tales clearly never met these two. I also really like Dreamcaller Siren, which seems to have been budged out in all the Russian hubbub surrounding the new pirates, but I really think the Siren deserves to stay. It's hard to block, can stymie an attack before it even begins, and it keeps blockers out of the way too. Love it. Finally, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and get another Anthem in here. There are a lot of 3 mana cards in this deck that pump up our fellow pirates, and I'd like to include Adaptive Automaton to join them. It's a little silly, but who cares if it's not a real flesh and blood buccaneer? The crew will love it anyway, and they definitely can't accuse it of being lily livered. Of course, to make room for these, we have to maroon some crewmates. Y'all might hate me for it, but Dire Fleet Captain and Dead Eye Plunderers are my first subtractions. Like I said, we have a flourishing crew now. We have to make some genuinely tough cuts because we just have so many good pirates to choose from. These cards focus on making themselves bigger, but I think they're just a little too self-serving to do right by our whole team. Evasion, in our case, will be preferable to simple size. I also really adore Impulsive Pilferer, but um, he's a 1-1. One -one. Sometimes he's multiple 1-1s, one but they can't attack the same enemy, and I guess he can be treasure too, but I don't know, I want to steal things. And in terms of 1-mana one 1-1s, one -ones, I just found myself preferring the Changeling Outcast to help us do that. The next card I'm showing no quarter is Protean Raider. This one hurts me to cut, but I just never found it having good targets, to be honest. To help with Brass's ability, I found I wanted it to actually remain a pirate most often, rather than turning into an enemy creature. And while it certainly can copy our own pirates, we actually have a lot more legendary pirates now that could sometimes get in this thing's way. The flexibility is cool, but it was just a smidge too situational for me, especially since it relies upon that raid ability. Finally, Angrath, I know you're a pirate, lad, but you don't help us much here. You're just a lot of mana, and the only ability I really like from you is the minus three, and even then, as a dedicated reanimation player from my literal entire commander career, I'm just very underwhelmed by that rate. It's okay, bud. Go home and say hi to your family for us. Our voyage nears its end. We're at the edge of the map, and X marks the spot. Let us now discuss the Pirate's Code. I mean... They're more like guidelines. I've got two primary things I want to tackle here. Card advantage and finishing the game. This deck list secretly has a problem with card advantage. It doesn't look it at first, but it's definitely there. Every version of the coastal piracy effects are here, for instance, but those are situational draw spells. They reward us when we're ahead, but they don't let us catch up when we're behind. And we know what happens to pirates if they fall too far behind. So I want to make some improvements to our other card advantage options. Pirates Prize and Pillage aren't quite it for four mana. Reminder again about the whole flavor disclaimer from earlier, I'm chopping these and I'm throwing in Secrets of the Golden City, which I really like, especially in a deck that can make treasure tokens. And I'm also putting in Skull Clamp, which can help us get back into the fray if one of our pirates ends up meeting their maker. I'm including one more too, Painful Truths. Three cards for three mana. What can I say? It's a great rate. Of course, that means we have to cut something to fit these in. Prying Blade I'm tossing out, just for its pacing. It's a more interesting card than I think people give it credit for, but it's less necessary for our pirates nowadays, even if they do have some evasion. On that note, I feel like I should address the fact that this deck only contains 35 lands. Our curve is fairly low, actually, and we can make a pretty decent bit of treasure here and there, so I'm not too worried about mana ramp and the overall acceleration of this deck, but keep a weather eye on the horizon. And if you find yourself with mana troubles, it could very well be the case that your ship needs to make port. I mean, add more mana. Land ho! Moving on. Siren's Ruse also catches my eye. 
This card's pretty funny if the deck did contain a Dockside Extortionist, but it doesn't, and I'm hard-pressed to find too many other targets that I want to blink with this card for good Enter the Battlefield effects. Mostly, it seems to help one of our pirates avoid an enemy removal spell, and that's a neat effect to cantrip, but I'm still mostly underwhelmed. Another cut I may get some flack for is the card Molten Echoes. I like the idea behind this one, but I think it might end up being a holdover from the days of Beckett's past. Before Commander Legends, there were just not enough good pirates to get Admiral Beckett Brass's ability to trigger with any degree of reliability. She would often have to be a member of that raiding party herself to try and actually get three total pirates to steal something in the first place. So therefore, the play pattern would kind of be structured around her presence on the battlefield. She would probably come out early, and then a card like Molten Echoes can double up, but more importantly, haste up any pirates that she plays afterwards so that you can get swiping right away. But now, I think that Brass can change up her playstyle a little bit. We have enough pirates now. We have enough evasive pirates now. We have enough good evasive pirates now. So we can play three of them and then play brass, attack with our three no longer summoning sick evasive pirates, and get to pilfering. Plus, like I mentioned with the clone earlier, this enchantment now has to contend with the presence of a lot more legendary creatures showing up on our deck, so it has fewer overall targets. Besides, when it comes to red cards, I think I've got a few ideas that pack a little bit more punch and will leave our opponents begging for parlay. In particular, I feel this deck is lacking in one other area. Proper finishers. How is this deck truly closing things out and turning enemies into fish food? There's the classic Revel in Riches, which is awesome, and Mechanized Production can also win with tons of treasure. Aside from that, we're mostly beating enemies down with a number of pirates, hopefully the ones that pump each other up, and also stealing enemy stuff just so that they can never get back into the game or offset our barrage. We do have to be realistic about how many things Brass can even actually steal, though. We only have so many attack steps, and at some point, enemies will die to combat damage anyway. So I want to lean into that, because powering up our combat is awesome with evasive creatures like these. So I'm adding in two red cards that have actually dropped in price since I last discussed them in the Edgar Markov video a while back. They're the cards Shared Animosity and Mercadia's Downfall. Both buff up our team of hard-to-block creatures and turn their chip damage into champ damage. Shared Animosity used to be more expensive, but it isn't all too hard on the coin purse these days, and Mercadia's Downfall is way cheap for such a powerful combat bonus. These cards are sure to send our enemies to the murky depths of Davy Jones' locker. Avast! I think that ought to do it! Our treasure chest is safely on board, the curses are lifted, and our crew is ready to set sail once more. You can find a link to the full list in the description below with the cuts in the brig. I mean, uh, maybe board. I hope you've enjoyed your journey with the Admiral, and if you have any other pirate tales to tell, be sure to share your shanties and spoils in the comments below with your fellow sea dogs. Arr.